but you see there are some points on which it is checked right so your presentation of the code matters a lot over here uh, even more than implementation if i talk about and mm -hmm. it oops concept are to be strictly followed you have to follow inheritance you have to follow uh, polymorphism you have to follow you have to write your code in a structured manner there are there should be different classes different entities hello everyone today we have with us navin he was my colleague at uh, geeks for geeks and uh, today he is here with us to discuss uh, his interview experience with uh, flipkart uh, hi navin uh, hi shashank yeah. so uh, hi everyone uh, this is navin and i am currently working as a software development engineer at flipkart and today i'll be specifically talking about my flipkart interview experiences and how i uh, like how how i was interviewed and how i was selected in the flipkart from the very starting uh, from applying to the uh, final process right so uh, i applied uh, so i applied in around january 2000 uh, uh 21 uh, with a referral from a linkedin post uh, so i used to browse linkedin daily and uh, try to check if someone is referring for sd1 positions at a uh, flipkart or good product based companies right and i applied through a referral uh, by someone i do not rem remember the name specifically and i was interviewed in january 2020 and uh, flipkart generally has for off campus it has the one the process on the same day the entire process and it consists of three specific rounds. And first round uh, consists of machine coding. Second round is problem solving and data structure round. And third round is specifically hiring manager round, uh, uh, where hiring manager like uh, asks management related questions. Uh, yeah, and before all this, online test also would be there, right? Uh, no, there is. Uh, there was no online test uh, with Flipkart, right? There is no oh, online okay. test. Uh, once you are like referred and selected, there's a, they call it a hiring drive of uh, their own, mm -hmm. and uh, it goes and starting from the like nine a.m. in the uh, morning till the and six p.m. and they have all the interview rounds uh, in the same day. If they are oh. not sure, they can have one more DS round, but uh, there is no specific uh, like online test or something. Oh, okay. and there are also like uh, some tests through which Flipkart has like grade or something, but mm -hmm. uh, like. I was interviewed uh, by a referral only. So, mm. and uh, in January, like I interviewed, but I was not selected. Like I was not selected in Flipkart. Uh, I have I have given interview again in June 2021 itself. And there I was selected uh, by Flipkart. And in that, from January to June, I have prepared enough to be like uh, for all the questions that went in. There are a lot of things through which I have prepared. So I'll mm -hmm. start with the first round that is machine coding round and I'll share like both the I'll journey uh, I'll share the questions uh, of both the uh, like in January and June both. So machine coding is something where you you are given a problem like you are given a development problem and you have to build a console based applications. So uh, it can be something like uh, for just example purpose like it can be snake and ladder game that you have to build a snake and ladder game there will be some requirements given. You have to build a console-based application. There you will be taking something like, let's say that you are taking input for a number of snakes, like from, from ninth point to 11th point, there's a snake and then a number of ladders. And then you will be given multiple players, like five players. And you have to start, like you have to show that uh, this player moved from this position to this position and snake came and these kind of uh, some things you have to do. You have to build the complete application uh, in a console-based manner. And there is no restriction for uh, this uh, for language for this round. You can use any language that you uh, are aware of. But you see, there are some points on which it is checked, right? So your presentation of the code matters a lot over here, uh, even more than implementation. If I talk about and mm -hmm. it oops concept are to be strictly followed. You have to follow inheritance. You have to follow uh, polymorphism. You have to follow. You have to write your code in a structured manner. There, are, there should be different classes, different entities, and uh, in the first, uh, in the first week in January, I was given an application. I think uh, I'm not sure about the question, but it was something like this snake and ladder type game only. And the mm -hmm. second uh, one, I was given some application uh, like it was task management system where you, where people can create tasks and. Uh, they can assign tasks to their uh, to multiple users, and users can pick tasks. These kind of features that you implement in this uh, type of questions. So mm -hmm. these push, uh, these machine coding rounds and questions specifically does not require much of the preparation if you have done some kind of development work before. Mm -hmm. 
from so if i talk it's about think, it uh, it's not like a particular correct or wrong answer like uh, as long as we have one working approach with following best practices so uh, they are fine with yes yes absolutely so there is no correct answer to this they are subjective but you mm. see uh, you have to try to give your best uh, Mm-hmm. like how much you know this it just shows that how much you are aware of this coding that this is this poops concepts and everything mm-hmm. so these are like check on a serious note mm-hmm. uh the, like first thing is that you you should have a working code second things it should be oops based and very clean code should be written and they both carry 50 50 uh, percentage got it and if i talk about how one should prepare about uh, this machine coding rounds and how you sh- one should go about it so it should be you can uh, there is a website called workat.tech where they have uh, given detailed explanation of uh, machine coding questions resources and multiple questions so you can browse through the resources and you will be able to get like almost every question that you are aware of uh, that you can like possibly practice before the interview and this is something that does not require much of the expertise you can practice it it for one month and you will be like uh, good at it it's mm-hmm. not something like dsa that you have to practice at least 6 to 7 months to be good at it it can be achieved in uh, around one month from like as of my understanding mm-hmm. talking about second round specifically psds round problem solving uh, round here uh interview will be interviewer will be asking you two questions and these questions will be based on like dsa only not specifically competitive programming or something they will be very clear dsa questions but uh they can be like mix of question like in the first uh in january i was asked two questions they were both on arrays and they were some like algorithm based so questions uh something like so very related questions their algorithm of a cadence algorithm or something is to be followed so in the first part in the first uh, january it was uh, both array based questions in the second time it was a uh, one graph question with 2d dp and uh, this short test path algorithm and mm-hmm. second uh, question was something from linked list uh, i think uh, i'm not sure about the question but it was like a complex linked list a uh, linked list question but like i said there is no much cp involved if you have practiced enough dsa like we talk about it today uh you you will be like uh, able to clear it but here something like luck matters and something like your knowledge matters like it depends upon the interviewer right what he wants to ask like in the mm-hmm. first time i was asked uh, array based question in the second round i was asked a graph mm-hmm. based question and linked list based question so it depends upon the interviewer mm-hmm. and uh preparing for dsa for like for any company not a specific flipkart you should be doing you should be going through the interview experiences of uh, like that company uh, on multiple platform like uh, geeks or geeks last door etc you should be uh, checking out what type of questions are asked what category of questions are asked like there are some companies that ask very hardcore graph questions it is quite sure that you will be asked questions on graph so you can practice it uh, similarly you can go through these interview questions uh, of the, that company and same for flipkart that's also how i practice then uh, like uh, go to uh, this uh, ds round mm-hmm. third round is something uh, that is called hiring manager round in this if you have some experience because off campus flipkart generally hires you can just say at least 6 to 7 months experience person so if you have done some project in your uh, previous company or if you are working with college uh, you have done with some project so it is basically project based round plus it is uh specific to how like management skills and how clever you are specifically like there was some question in the first uh, in january like uh, there is a basket of apples there basket of bananas and there is basket of apple and bananas and you have to uh, all the baskets are like have the name printed wrong uh, there is no basket that has a correct name you just have to pick one fruit from each one of the baskets and tell which basket is which one so these type of questions can come Uh, like mm-hmm. these are some crazy questions that can uh, mm-hmm. stick stick in your mind but you are patient enough to listen to the question carefully they have a trick with them right mm. so i think they will usually require some out of the box thinking and uh, maybe you can practice yeah. such questions from uh, gig stories in puzzle sections yeah these kind of puzzles you can just say but uh, it mm-hmm. is specifically based on project itself mm-hmm. so uh, these are the three basic rounds that you have at flipkart mm. uh, yeah so i think okay. uh, Yeah, we can move on to some uh, Q and A section now. Uh, does CGPA matter for Flipkart? Sure. So for Flipkart, if I talk about 
CGP like from the first process until the last process i haven't heard that cgp matter but still mm-hmm. you should be having having like a good cgp at least 6 6.0 plus right but it mm-hmm. doesn't matter like if i talk about it so next question is uh, uh, cp what's the standard dsa so like i said in the process itself cp is not much required when i talk about flip card specifically they are like core dsa questions but you should be like doing good in dsa uh, mm-hmm. cp is not required hmm is the interview only about like a problem is given we want to solve it or is there more to it like uh, communication and etc uh if i talk about first two rounds like it is more about implementation and pro- like w- how much you have solved the question but third mm-hmm. round it is more about communication and expressing and presentation and everything for problem solving round it is just about that you solve the question uh mm-hmm. in the given timeline because there is a timeline there is a one hour timeline for solving both the questions okay So yeah, like maybe not during the problem solving, but still like a requirement clarification part and all, we need to ensure uh, we communicate that at least the minimum amount so that uh, we do the problem solving properly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you have any specific suggestions like for before the interview, like few months before or one week before? Sure. So once you are aware that you are about to be interviewed at this X Y Z company, you should be. St- you should start exploring about what type of questions are asked in that company you can read about interview experiences from geeks for geeks from glassdoor from other platforms like leadcode and you can also reach out to multiple people uh, of that company like how should i prepare you should you can reach out to hr how should i prepare so this is something you have to do and once you are very clear about the rounds that are there and what type of questions are asked you can try like in start preparing like if you are aware that this gra- graph questions are asked highly in some company if you if you pre- uh, focus more on that it, there are more chances right Hmm. like this you have to know first what you have to do once hmm. you know it you can practice enough for that part so that like you secure a good uh, marks in that something like that hmm right so yeah like first they have to spend some time on just exploring these uh, intro experience articles clarifying from uh, people working there or hrs and then they yeah. will they'll have a clear set of path and uh, they have to just focus on executing the plan yeah right. Yeah. Oh, you can also any... focus on uh, some cheat sheets or something if you talk about dsa like if you do not know much about it you can focus on some sheets practicing like common questions that come in interviews hmm right and do you have any suggestions like uh, like few days or one week is left like uh, with respect to revision and all uh if few days are left uh for you know, like your interview you can mm-hmm. uh, like very much focus on like uh the like i told interview questions only and try mm-hmm. to be calm do not uh, try to be like a very hyper that you have your interview tomorrow and you are trying to study everything be very focused on like that you have your interview tomorrow be relaxed and try to read limited data at the in the last week and you should not focus on anything else other than the company specific questions in the last week of it if i talk about what do you have suggestions for uh, during interview so for during interview first thing that you have to focus on is patience you have to be very patient when you are answering the questions do not try it, do not be nervous do not get hyper just be mm-hmm. very patiently understanding the problem and then giving the solution to it and you answer only if you know it you do not try to mess up with the wrong solution right you answer mm-hmm. if you know the correct solution otherwise say that i do not know about it mm-hmm. but it depends upon the question like if there is a problems uh, like dsa based question you can try for it but there is mm-hmm. there is some conceptual question that you that is asked and you do not know about it hmm you can skip it right you can just say that i yeah. do not know about it yeah so knowledge based questions like uh, we, we cannot pretend to try like we can directly admit we are not aware of that and maybe we'll go and learn that but if there's yeah. some question like puzzle or a problem solving we should at least try to do some extent yeah yeah so like does it have to be flawless like uh, is it possible that there are some glitches but still we get a positive result oh uh, yeah like in this work from home kind of scenario it can be there are some glitches and something like that and it can be possible that you did not answer all the questions but still if you are approach was correct and interview like interviewer liked your like sense of understanding the problem and solution uh, giving the solution you can be selected uh, positively okay. like you you have to have a positive attitude mm mm-hmm. So, uh, do you have to say something about like uh, what will be your impression if uh, based on dressing sense or like uh, turning on the camera or sharing screen or not? It does it matter? 
Uh, nothing much. Like everyone understands that uh, this work from home scenario is going on, so there is nothing much to be uh, done with a camera and everything. Everyone like understands this that this is something that is uh, very common now. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Flipkart, I wasn't like supposed to share the camera or something until the last round. If I talk about okay. it. Mm-hmm. I think uh, uh, there is no harm if it is possible. It is uh, never better to uh, do yeah. this. Take care of this. Uh, any suggestions for like uh, after interviews, like uh, if it is positive or if there is a rejection, how to handle them? So if I talk about myself, I had been rejected for over twenty companies till date. So uh, I so uh, that's see, more than have... how much people would have ever applied it. Yeah. So uh, you see. Uh, i understood i learned from each interview experience that is given you first thing that you do is even if you are selected or you are not selected you try to go through the questions that were asked so that next time when you give the interview you are very prepared of those questions because this is something that you have to do right you have to prepare mm-hmm. all the questions and try to prepare all the questions that were asked like and mm-hmm. secondly if even if you are rejected you can like there is always a chance there is no ending to the life you can reapply most of the companies have this 6 months period after then you can reapply so for this 6 right. months you can prepare again and reapply if you have some dream company or something yeah. like that like yeah, yeah. and there nowadays also there are so many opportunities so many good companies and it's not like a board exams like 10th or 12th like yeah. final result right. yeah yeah there are a lot of companies that you can figure out they're not specifically like one company that you have to go run behind right right so do you have any uh, pro tips uh pro tips if i talk about it uh consistency like with like i talk about it if i talk about dsa you have to be consistently consistently solving questions daily that's the only thing that you can excel uh, that can make you perfect in dsa uh, mm-hmm. if you are not expert like it is said that solving 10 questions at the weekend is less preferred than solving two questions daily because right. it keeps you in connect like i have mm-hmm. uh, i have been doing dsa for more than you can just say 2 years now and mm-hmm. i had left dsa uh, once like and it was mm-hmm. it's very hard to catch it again so just pre- right. be consistent and that's mm-hmm. all uh, that pro tip and you can just say okay do you want to highlight upon a role of luck does it matter uh luck and luck matters like uh, luck actually matters in ds round like i talked about so mm-hmm. it depends upon what interview you uh what interview you have got but still if you have prepared enough this luck role you can excel at luck is something hmm. uh that matters but not as much as your preparation it's just 10% of the entire interview process right so we can control uh, how much percent of luck uh, we'll be relying on if we are prepared on maximum possible questions and topics we are relying lesser and lesser on luck yeah correct right Uh, okay Navin I think uh, that's all we have had planned for this session uh, thank you for uh, being with us uh, looking forward for a uh, few further more uh, interview experience with you thank you sure sure Shashank thank you